Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our, our Sunday service streaming from Newcastle Baptist Church. It was lovely last weekend to hear people joining us from different parts of the world and from our own locality as well. You're very welcome back uh, again to us. Just a reminder that if you uh, find yourself with a little bit of delay at some point, just hold on. It's just a moving of videos across from one to the other. Thank you for joining us and uh, just really one announcement is that we have a care team in place. If anybody out there or anybody that you know of needs help, uh, if you contact Drew Holmes or put a note on our web page, then we'll try and get you some help. If you find yourself isolated or in any situ situation like that at this particular time. We're going to go through our service today. Rachel is going to bring a children's address. Uh, we're going to have a song in the middle, then a song at the end. And we're going to have readings from God's Word and, and some thoughts, uh, some truth brought to us from God's Word uh, as well. As we do that, we're going to pray together. On Wednesday evening, we were, we were led by one of our elders, Bertie, to the place uh, from Isaiah 26 that says this, In that day, this song will be sung, sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. God makes salvation its walls and ramparts. Open the gates that the righteous nation may enter. The nation that keeps faith. And then these lovely words. You, speaking of God, you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. And then the call is trust in the Lord forever. For the Lord, the Lord is the rock eternal. That's our God. Let's pray to him uh, just now. Lord, as we come to you this morning, we want to thank you for your goodness. We thank you that you are God. We thank you that you never change. You are the Lord, the Lord, the rock eternal, the one in whom we can put our trust. We can stand with and upon, and we find ourselves in Christ Jesus linked to our God forever. Lord, we come before you and acknowledge that you're the one who doesn't change, the one who is right there as the creator God, the first and only. There is nothing higher than you. There is no one greater than you and no one beyond your help. You are the all-powerful God. You are the ever-present God. You're the all-knowing God the perfect, sovereign King. Lord, as we come this morning, we ask that you will forgive us, forgive our mistrust, forgive our doubts and fears that maybe have become more significant than the truth of your holy word. We pray that you would forgive us if anything has gotten in the way of our relationship with you. Lord, thank you for grace. Thank you for mercy. Thank you for forgiveness. Thank you for help and salvation. Lord, we bring before you some situations that are needed to be brought before your wonderful throne that is there for us. We pray for children and young people. Maybe growing up through a period of time now, not really understanding what's going on. We pray for their families we pray, Lord, your blessing upon each one. We pray, too, for our own Ali Hossack, scheduled for surgery next week. And we pray that that will go according to your will and your plan, and great peace will be upon her. We pray, Lord, for little Robin, little baby, for Eva, a young girl. We pray for we, Harry, and the Stott family at this time as well. We pray for Annette returning from France, and we thank you that that is possible. Lord, there may be others known to us and known to our church or churches who are presently away from home, feeling lonely, distant from their families. No, God, we pray for them. We pray for, Lord, for those who have to work at this time in whatever sphere, but especially, Lord, for the NHS staff. We thank you, Lord, also for those who work in care homes, those who are private care people, and we pray for them. 
We pray, Lord, for local businesses in this area that are affected by this virus, this change, as we all are in one sense. And Lord, we ask that you will bless Rachel as she comes shortly and shares with us what you have given upon her heart and to her heart to share with our children. We pray, Lord, for one another, for those known to us, and especially those at this time, O oh God, to feel isolated or fearful, anxious, particularly those who maybe are not right with you. They're not saved. They don't have any hope. And we pray for them. Lord, for ourselves as Christians, whether in this church or, or beyond, we pray that you will give us the help, the wisdom that we need for all of these days, because we too will become anxious. We too will be fearful. We too will be prone, as we said earlier, to be mistrustful of even your truth, your truths. Lord, help us. Like the man in the Bible, we pray, Lord, we believe. Help our unbelief. We are human after all. But we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you know where we are. You know what we're like. You know our frailty of body and mind. And you care. Lord, we ask all of these things, asking for your help, calling upon you in these days. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Just before we hear from Rachel, we're going to read a portion of Scripture. It's a portion written, I suppose, the story of a man, the king who came back from a period of being troubled deeply in his mind over things. And he came back and he prayed to God. And I'm going to take some of his words that you will hopefully find helpful. It's in Daniel chapter 4, and his name is Nebuchadnezzar. And he says, at the end of the days when he was recovering, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted my eyes to heaven, and my reason returned to me, and I blessed the Most High and praised and honored him who lives forever. For his dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom endures from generation to generation. All the inhabitants of the earth are accounted as nothing, and he does according to his will among the host of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can stay his hand or say to him, What have you done? At the same time, my reason returned to me, and for the glory of my kingdom, my majesty and splendor also returned to me. My counselors and my lords sought me, and I was established in my kingdom, and still more greatness was added to me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the King of heaven, for all his works are right and his ways are just. And those who walk in pride, he is able to humble. Those are words from a man who was just getting to know God. And he recognizes who God ultimately is. We're going to hear in a moment from Rachel. And immediately after that, we're going to hear a lovely song. A song that simply says in a wonderful and a beautiful way, Jesus Christ my living hope. I wonder, is that your experience today, that Jesus Christ is your living hope? Over to Rachel. Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm going to be speaking for a few minutes to the boys and girls, so if they're not here, um, just press the pause button and go and grab them. Give them a wee shout up the stairs and tell them to come along. Um, so boys and girls, it's been lovely to know that some of you have been tuning in uh, to our online services and also some of you have been really enjoying this Gather at Home resource that we shared last week. And I just want to tell you that I really miss you. I miss seeing you each week. I miss hearing your voices and I miss hearing um, what's going on in your own world. Um, but over the next uh, number of weeks, we need to be staying at home and um, we need to stay at home to keep safe. And we want you to know that we're praying for each of you and we haven't forgotten about you. 
Over the next um, few weeks, I'm going to be uploading um, some wee videos and I'm going to be sharing the Together at Home resource um, with your families. So you can ask them to download that so you can be doing that together as a family. And also there's going to be some kids praise going on. So you can ask them to show you that and you can be singing along um, to our kids praise each week. So last week we learned the story about Jesus calming the storm. And this week we're going to be learning a new story. And this story requires us to go and smell some things. Okay, so give your nose a little wiggle and come along with me because I'm going to be bringing you around my house and outside to smell a few things. Come on. So here's one of the horses on the yard. And I actually love the smell of a horse. But my husband Philip doesn't like it so much because if he was to smell this horse, his eyes would start to get puffy, his nose would start to get all sneezy and his skin would start to get itchy. So he doesn't like the smell of a horse, but I love it. What about you guys at home? Now the next thing I'm gonna smell is actually one of my favorite things, but I've had to sneak outside for this because it's chocolate cake and it's far too early in the morning for my girls to see me eating chocolate cake. Shh. But I actually love the smell of chocolate cake. And when I smell it, it actually makes my mouth water. So I should probably put it to the test just to make sure it tastes delicious too. Mmm. So here we are at feeding time for the sheep and we've got some nice um, sheep meal. Let me see how it smells. It smells good, but I definitely wouldn't eat it. But these sheep think it tastes and smells great. Now, we're in Emily's room and I brought you into Emily's room to see her perfume. Emily loves perfume and she got this perfume at Christmas and you can see it's already nearly empty. Emily loves the smell of perfume and sometimes whenever I come into her room I'm hit with a big smell of musty perfume and sometimes she likes to spray it all over her clothes and there was one time when I came in and I opened up her drawers that the perfume had been poured over her clothes. Emily loves the smell of perfume. So we're back. And lots of you are thinking, what is going on? Why are we smelling all these different smells? Has Rachel gone crazy? But no, today we're going to be learning a story about a lady who had a beautiful smelling bottle of perfume. And it was so good. It was smelt so beautiful. And so I want you to listen along to our story. Our story is found in Luke chapter 12, verses 1 to 8. And I'm going to be using our children's Bible to tell this story this morning. But afterwards, why don't you go and look it up in your own Bible when you're doing your resource together with your family. Mary and Martha were two of Jesus's good friends. They were getting ready for a big dinner party at their house. And it was a dinner for Jesus. They had invited all his good friends. That night, many people sat down together at Mary and Martha's table. Martha was busy as always. She carried the food to the table. But Mary did a surprising thing. She took some perfume that cost a lot of money and she poured it on Jesus's feet. Then she wiped his feet with her hair and it made the whole house smell sweet. One of Jesus's friends, was named Judas and he said why didn't Mary sell this perfume she could have given us the money then we could give it to the poor people but Judas said this because he really wanted the money he was the keeper of the money bag and he took money out of the bag when nobody was looking he spent the money on himself leave Mary alone said Jesus she gave this perfume to me as a gift because I will not always be able to be here with you isn't that a really interesting story? And did you know that that perfume was like an oil and it would have been in a valuable jar that would have held about a pint and that would have taken up a, a, probably about a year's worth of wages for that lady to buy that. And she had just poured it over Jesus's feet. You see, Jesus was the most important person in her life and she wanted to show him how much she loved him. She had given everything she had to him it makes us think, do we love Jesus? How much do we love Jesus? And how do we show him that we love him? Well, we can't pour perfume on Jesus' feet, but we can show our love for him in different ways. And one of these ways is to give our lives to him. And we can do that by saying sorry for our sins. And if you tuned in last week, you would have heard Mark telling us what sin was. Can you remember? 
It's anything we think, say or do that breaks our bond with God. So we can say sorry to God for our sins and we can ask him to forgive us and to come into our life. And as well as that, we can spend time with God. We can show our love to him by spending time reading our Bible or praying to him, just talking to him or singing our praises to him. And that's a way that we can show God how much we love him by spending time with him. So that's why even though we can't meet each week at church or shine, um, we still want you to be, to be doing that, to be showing God how much you love him by spending time with him. And that's why we've given you the Together at Home resource so you can do that as a family together. So why not have fun together as a family doing that today um, and post some of your pictures online for me. Um, I'd love to see you engaging in that. Take care everybody and we'll see you again soon.